Hello and welcome to this vSuite version 0.4 video tutorial which is a follow-up video tutorial to the simple Energy Plus simulation tutorial. So once again in this video we'll be talking about the NV component of the vSuite as an interface to Energy Plus and we're going to cover some slightly more advanced specification of the Energy Plus zone in terms of heating and cooling and occupancy etc. So this initial screen you'll hopefully recognize from the end of the uh, previous video tutorial. We have a single zone, single blender object which has been designated a single NV thermal zone. Uh, got some windows, walls, roof etc. Uh, this is a node setup we had at the end of the last video. So we have NV geometry export, we have VI location providing location data for an NV context export, we have the NV simulation node and we did some 2D visualizations with the VI chart node. In this video the important bit actually happens here when we export the NV geometry not only do we create a copy of the original geometry on Blender's layer 2, but we also create some additional zone specific nodes. You'll notice this zone is called ground floor and the copy on layer 2 is called en underscore ground floor. NV always puts an en underscore prefix in front of the Blender object name to designate uh, that this is um, um, copied NV geometry. So if we come back into the node editor I'm just going to drag a new window open and instead of having the VI network node groups selected I'm going to select this little wind icon down here and this will open the NV network node group and in there, if I zoom out enough, you should see we have a zone node which was created automatically when we did an NV geometry export. Now that zone node has a zone name and that is the EN underscore ground floor zone. That's our copy geometry on layer 2. So this zone node is related to that um, copied object. We have an option here for how we control natural ventilation but I'm going to deal with natural ventilation in a subsequent video so I won't do it here. Minimum opening factor also has to do with ventilation so I'll leave that as it is for now. But I'm going to concentrate on these four red sockets here. HVAC heating, ventilation and cooling, occupancy, equipment and infiltration. Ventilation availability schedule again relates to natural ventilation and I'll deal with that in a subsequent tutorial. So let's think about heating our zone. If we want to heat or cool our zone we want to plug in to this HVAC socket here and we will want an HVAC node to plug into it. So we link those two together and we have some options here. Now Energy Plus was developed at an American institution and in America it's very common to use air as a heating and cooling source for a building as opposed to the UK where we tend to only provide heating and that tends to be a water-based system. Because uh, Energy Plus is sort of got American heritage with these air-based systems some of these options like flow rate um, are sort of um, specific to those air-based systems um, but when doing an HVAC analysis at this level this is more like a kind of system sizing uh, simulation so we work out how much heat is required with a perfect system and then a sort of early design stage simulation and then we can refine that 
or simulate more complex heating systems as time goes on. But as an initial system sizing uh, heating simulation, then we have these sort of air-based options. And you can look up what these options mean in a little bit more detail in the Energy Plus input-output reference manual. Um, I'm just going to put no limit in here first. This HVAC template option, by the way, um, yeah, I might talk about that in a subsequent video, but it's not very important right now. So if I've got no heating limit, that means my heating system can provide as much heat as possible via this air heating system. And it will do that by supplying air at 50 degrees Celsius. That's the default. And it will do so when the zone temperature tries to drop below 20 degrees Celsius. So because we've got no limit specified here for the heating limit, we would expect that the zone now will never go below 20. Because as soon as it tries to go below 20, the system can uh, inject uh, an infinite amount of heat into the room to make sure it stays at 20. Um, so let's just quickly have a look at that. If I come back into my VI network node tree, if I now, I've cr the zone node gets created at this stage, we then make changes to the zone nodes, and once we've done those changes, then we do export. And then we can calculate. So now if I look at temperature, I should hopefully see, yeah, that my temperatures now minimize at 20 degrees Celsius. So as soon as it tries to go below 20, uh, the heating system injects heat to keep it at 20. And we can see that if we look at the heating watts. So highest in winter, peaking up 350 watts, not very much because we've got no ventilation. Uh, and it's a relatively well insulated little room. Um, but it peaks at 350 and becomes zero at summer time when we don't need any additional heat to keep the zone at 20 degrees or above. Um, cooling watts, I haven't specified any cooling yet, so that will just be zero. Um, to get these extra options appear here, make sure that you pick heating watts, cooling watts, etc. in uh, your NV export node. So, if I come back into here, so that was a very basic heating. I could now limit the capacity of the heating system. Now we peaked at 350 watts when we had no limit. So if I put in 250 here, that should mean that the heating system is not powerful enough to keep the zone at 20 degrees Celsius all the time. So if I come out of there, export again, calculate. If I have a look at the temperature, yeah, we can see Every now and again it drops below 20. We're maxing out the heating system, which we should be able to see. Yeah, we're maxing out at these places, 250. So, um, we could also limit the flow rate and capacity. So, this is the capacity of the heating system. And this is the flow rate of the air, maximum flow rate of the air that we can supply to maintain the temperature we want. So those are the various options that we have. Um, we can apply a little bit of heat recovery to this system if you want to do a very simple mechanical ventilation with heat recovery simulation. Um, but I'll leave that off here. Um, exactly the same thing applies to cooling. It's the same nominal air-based system that's providing the cooling. So we have similar options. If we limit the flow rate of the cooling system, for example, we can control the temperature that it comes in at. Default is 13 degrees Celsius. 
and we can control the maximum airflow rate that can come in. So, and we can control the temperature at which it will try and control. So it's coming in a maximum of 0 0.01 meters cube per second will come in at 13 degrees Celsius to try and maintain the zone temperature at no higher than 24 degrees Celsius. So if I come back into export calculate, we should now hopefully see some impact of that cooling system because the cooling system is not strong enough to keep it at 24 degrees Celsius all the time but you can see its influence here um, and we can now see some cooling watts being applied in the zone as you might imagine mostly in summer so that's um, you know the basics of heating and cooling we can also specify again as part of a mechanical ventilation with heat recovery simulation simple simulation we can specify some outdoor air coming in um, because it's an air-based system um, that air can come in from outside um, but again I will refer you to the energy plus uh, manual for more details of that now this heating and cooling system is being applied all the time 24 hours a day it's looking to see if the temperature drops below 20 or above 24 for cooling and then it will inject heat but sometimes in a building heating systems aren't available all the time sometimes heating systems are shut down irrespective of the temperature inside or the thermostat level changes uh, a different level at night to daytime in a commercial building for example so to simulate those kinds of things we require schedules which are uh, schedule sockets are yellow and we have three on this HVAC node we have the overall schedule for the heating system when it's available and when it isn't we have the heating thermostat temperature level and we have the cooling thermostat temperature level. So these can change over time. So I'm going to add a schedule node. I'm going to put it into my heating availability. Uh, I'm going to put it into my uh, heating availability schedule socket. And in this schedule node, we start off with three dialogues. The first one is for the period of the year from day one that this schedule will apply to so if I say for more or less the first half of the year for weekends and weekdays and you can see what the valid options are by hovering your mouse so for weekends and weekdays, we can now define the availability of the heating system. One being it's available and zero being it's not available. So these in this until box, we now put in pairs of values. The first being a time, the second being the heating availability. So we start these until start automatically at midnight. So if I put in 08 colon 00, that means from midnight until 8 in the morning, the heating system for the weekends is off. I then comma separate to say between now 8 in the morning and let's say uh, 6 o'clock at night, 18 is 24 hour clock you need to use uh, the heating system is on actually I might make that a little bit later I might make that 23 so from 8 in the morning to 11 at night it's on and then we have to have a final following midnight so from 2300 hours to 2400 hours 
11 till 12 at night, the heating system is off again. Now that covers the weekends, but we also have weekdays here. So these numbers will be for the weekends. And so for weekdays, we now semicolon to separate. And we now say, oh, between midnight and 06 in the morning, it's off, comma, between 06 and 09 in the morning, it's on, comma, between 09 in the morning and uh, 18, it's off, people are at work, and from 18 to 24, it's on again. If I click enter, then because this number is less than 365, we now have a, a separate set of uh, end day fours and untils to cater for the latter half of the year. So I'm just going to make this a bit quicker. I'm just going to put in all days 24. So for the whole day, the heating system is available. So that then, and then the node should go gray. Once it's kind of red, all these, and they look okay, the node should go back to its default color. So if I now come back into my VI node network, export and calculate again we'll hopefully see some difference between the first half of the year where the heating system was on and off all the time turns on turns off turns on turns off you might see that a little bit clearer if I concentrate on the first part of the year with my plot we can see the heating system go up and down as it turns on and off. And at the end of the year, it's just used naturally. As it's constantly available, it will constantly provide the heat required to keep the zone at 20 degrees Celsius. So, um, that is an availability schedule we can also have a kind of value schedule and that value schedule we can use for setting the thermostat heating level so in this case um, let's say uh, weekdays and weekends and I'm just going to do the whole day so midnight up until the following midnight now we put in actual values so 16 degrees Celsius is a thermostat level at the weekends and semicolon so that I can do at the weekends or let's say 22 they like it warm at the weekends so these are now the actual centigrade temperature values of the thermostat and you'll see that when I unlink this node we have this thermostat level we can specify manually when we link this which provides those values for us that option disappears from the main node exactly the same thing would apply to the cooling thermostat level so if I come out of here come out into here export calculate then hopefully um, we can now see we might see it a bit more clearly in terms of temperature actually So there we go. You can see 16 is now the thermostatic set point at the back end of the year. Um, and 22 
is the let me just come out of here I forgot what I set weekdays is 16 weekends is 22 okay so we can see where it's sometimes a thermostat level of 22 degrees has an impact and we can see sometimes where the thermostat level of 16 has an impact so there are two separate thermostat levels now one based on the weekends one based on the weekdays so that's the basics of heating cooling and scheduling um, we also have occupancy so I'm going to add an occupancy node um, I can add a schedule to that and the kind of schedule is a one zero or a proportional schedule again so I'm going to say the occupants What I'm about to say isn't necessarily rational, I'm just, um, you know, it's just demonstration purposes. So I might say for all days, but one to day one to day 365, um, between midnight and 08 in the morning, everyone is there, one, comma, between eight in the morning and seven at night, no one is there, zero. And between seven at night and the following midnight, uh, everyone is there again. Now these one zero numbers are a multiplier to the maximum occupancy as expressed in this node, occupancy node. So if I say it's just absolute number of occupants we're talking about, if I say the max number of occupants is two, then from midnight to 8 in the morning, there'll be 1 times 2, or 2 people there. Between 8 and 7, there'll be 0 times 2, or 0 people there. Um, and you can guess what happens between 7 and midnight. So we can also add activity and um, ventilation and uh, work efficiency schedules into here. Um, especially if we're going to do a comfort calculation which I guess I could do why not so that looks all fine come out of here come into here make sure that I've got um, some comfort metrics selected here yeah, I've got occupancy and PPD when I was preparing this video um, so I think we can export I think we can calculate Yeah, we should have some new options over here. So PPD, proportion dissatisfied, very high proportion dissatisfied most of the time, a little bit too cold during winter. Um, we can look at the occupancy level. So might be worth me just looking at the first 10 days of the year the occupancy goes up and down between two and zero um, and because of those occupants they will have an impact on the temperature within the space I don't know if we'll uh, I don't know if we'll see that temperature difference particularly uh, let's plot temperature and occupancy together mm, let's try the first 10 days Uh, yeah, you can see a little bit of the influence of the occupancy and the heat they're giving off on the temperature profile. So that's the basics of occupancy. Um, we can do a CO2 calculation in here as well, um, but because I don't have any ventilation set up at the moment, um, that ventilation level is just going to go keep going up and up and up. So I won't bother with that right now. Uh, what else have we got? Equipment. So this is kind of a an internal heat gain into the space. So I'll bring that 
in. This can also have a schedule associated with it. Um, I'm just going to specify uh, a constant equipment level of 150 watts um, and infiltration. Now this video isn't about a detailed ventilation simulation but we can very simply apply an infiltration rate to a zone. Infiltration being kind of background ventilation. And we've got various different uh, units we can choose from. I'm going to choose air changes per hour, ACH, put in 0 0.25. So now, now that I've got an infiltration level, I think I could do a CO2 simulation if I wanted. So come out of there. Again, this infiltration le level can be uh, specified with a schedule. So come out of there, come into here. Uh, zone ventilation CO2 uh, so export calculate and now let's see what you've got and you've got CO2 quite high first part of the year then drops during the second part of the year think that's because of uh, this outdoor air comes in when the heating system is on so as it's on all the time in the latter half of the year that outdoor air that extra outdoor air coming in keeps our co2 level quite low um, we can look at the infiltration rate we've set a constant infiltration rate but it does vary a little bit because of temperature changes within the zone and uh, change that can have on air density but it's between 0 0.255 and 0 0.27 in this case and I think that's more or less everything so HVAC occupancy equipment, they each have their own input node and then these input nodes can have a schedule associated with them to control when there's infiltration, when there's equipment loads, when there's occupancy, etc. Um, the kind of schedule required for each of these different types of zone characteristic then again the Energy Plus user manual is a good place to look for details. And I think in terms of sort of more advanced Energy Plus zone specification, I think that's everything I need to cover. So yeah, okay, thanks for watching.